What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how to integrate your native Cinema 4D files into Unreal Engine. Now I was on the forums and I saw a lot of people were kind of confused on how to do this and they really didn't lay it out too well. So I did a little bit of playing around last night. I figured it out. You have to have the latest um, preview version of Unreal, but Cinema 4D I'm using R20 and you don't have to do anything to Cinema. It's all about how you set it up in Unreal. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so to get started, I'm here. I have the Unreal Epic Launcher opened up. And so I'm on the Unreal tab down here, and I have Unreal tagged right here. So if you, there's a couple of things that you need to install first. And so if you scroll down here on the front page, you should come to like a blog. Here we go. So it says Unreal Engine now supports Cinema 4D. So I'll click on that. And it's going to bring me to the Epic's website. And so here, this is the news announcement that they made. So I guess you could go to Unreal site to get to here. But if you go into the news feed and you look at this first blue highlighted mark right here, this is free Unreal Studio beta. That's what we're gonna want. And so we click on this, it's gonna take us to another page. And from here, you're gonna have to go down here in the bottom right where it says get the free beta now. You wanna click on this and then it should take you to another page that tells you to log into Unreal. Um, I'm already logged in, so it skipped that step. But once you log in, then it will bring you to this page here saying thank you. And that basically signs you up for the beta there. So you can either hit download Unreal Studio, or if you go to your Epic Launcher, you're going to see it inside your um, tab already. So if I go to library, it will be under my engine versions. I already have it installed. So right now I have 4.23.0 preview three. But if you don't have it already downloaded, you'll want to click on this plus button here and then you'll get like a grid out box here. And all you have to do is click on this down arrow and install the preview version, which right now as of today, it is 4.23. And so you'll want to install that. And then once you install that, You'll also have access to this down here where it says Unreal Studio Beta. You'll want to install the, um, the Datasmith. And so you want to click Install the Engine. Once you click here, it will ask you what engine you want to install it to. I already have it installed the 4.23, but that option should come up for you here. So all you do is select the engine that you want to use, hit Install, and then you should be, um, you should be good to go. And so last night when I was playing around I had this, I built this scene out. You can see it on my social medias, but it's just like a sci-fi corridor. I have an emission material here. And one thing to note is for materials, it only uses the native cinema, um, cinema 4D materials. It doesn't use the materials with the nodes or anything. So you want to go with the basic cinema 4D, you know, as you know it. I just have two plastic materials here. And then I have an emission in here as well. And that's how I have this scene set up. And um, we'll get to this one later. I want to do a simple setup first to show you guys how to get everything going. So let me start up a new scene here. And I'm just going to make a cube. And let's make this, um, I'll just do 100 by 100 by 100. And one of the cool things about being able to use the integrated C4D, um, the native, is that you can actually use the MoGraph cloner inside of Unreal. So I'm gonna put a cloner in here. I'm gonna make this cloner radial. I'm gonna extend it out. Nothing too crazy. And you can actually use a cloner within a cloner. So if I go back up and make another MoGraph cloner and drag my cloner in here and just do linear. And I'm just gonna extend this on a Z axis instead. So let's do like 11. We'll extend this out on a Z axis here. Set it like 500. And then I'll just randomly offset it a bit just to add some variety. And then like I said, you want to use your native Cinema 4D uh, materials here. And so I just double click down here. Now I'll double click again. I'll go to my reflectant channel. Let me remove the default. Now I'll add a GGX. I'm just going to do like a basic plastic material again. So if I come down here to my layer for now and just go to dialectic, 
maybe um i just do sapphire just something reflective then the color let's just pick something what do you like red shout out the main gear we'll do main gear red drag that in here so now we are all ready to go now when you save this file you're going to want to save it differently like usually you would go up to file save as and then you would save it how you want it and so um let me just go to my i'll do c4d test i just do Wimbush example save Okay, so I did one bush example save. And if I, um, that's the standard way that you would, you would save your file in Cinema 4D. But if you want to send this to Unreal, what you want to do is go up to File. And there's a little thing down here on the left called Save Project for Melange. And so you want to save it both ways. You want to do regular save as so you have your project file. But when you're ready to send it to Unreal, you want to do the save project for Melange or Melange. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But once you click on that, and then we're going to have to name our file. So I'll just name this example for Unreal. Save it like so. And then that's all you have to do from there. And so from here, we're going to go over to Unreal. I'm going to launch my 4.23. Okay, so after everything is done loading for Unreal, it's going to bring you to this Projects tab. I want to come over to New Project. And usually it will have this blueprint open. So like if you want to have something in there, like a template to already start from, you can have like a first person camera in here. You can have a third person in there and you can use your Xbox controller and everything or a keyboard or mouse to control your, um, your camera or your character. But I'm just gonna go to Unreal Studio. I'm just gonna start with a blank canvas. Make sure you save it where you wanna save everything and then hit create project. Now give this a few more moments to open up. It's initializing right now. All right, looks like we're good. Okay, so now this is our canvas here. And you notice up top here, you'll have this little icon that says Datasmith. You want to click on the little arrow beside it, and then you'll see the Cinema 4D icon. So click on this, and then we want to go and find the folder that we saved the Melange one for, which was example for Unreal. I know I spelled example wrong here. Let me fix that. There we go. All right, so example for Unreal, you want to click open. And then it's going to ask you where you want to import everything. If you, um, you can make folders down here if you want, but I'm just going to use the content folder that's already provided. So I'm going to click OK. And then from here, it's going to ask you what you want to import. I usually just leave everything checkmarked here, but you can actually bring in lights and cameras and animation as well. So let's click import. Give it a second to load up. And there we go. And so now we have our Cinema 4D cloner stuff inside of unreal which is pretty crazy so if i click play up here we're actually running everything in real time and i'm controlling this with my keyboard just with the wasd so i'm just doing keyboard and mouse and now everything is running in real time inside of unreal and you can see we have our reflective um, cinema 4d material attached to all of our cubes so now let me show you guys what I was working on yesterday. So that's basically how you bring everything in. That's just the basics of it. So I want to show you guys the sci-fi scene that I was working on yesterday. So I'm just going to go up to file, make a new level, just go on default. I'm not going to save anything here. Okay. So from here, I'm going to import the scene that I built last night. Let me see, C4D test. No, that's not it. Here we go, C4D for Unreal. So I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna bring it into my contents folder. And this one is a little bit larger. It's gonna take a little bit to import. I can open it up in Cinema to kind of show you guys what I have built in here. So let me go back to my C4D to Unreal. Okay, so yeah, I have this corridor built. I'm using some kit bash models. Basically, it has the sci-fi panels for the ground. I put a plane inside the ground just to kind of have that um, 
have some light coming through the cracks and everything. And then here, I have like the sci-fi wall pillows. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. I mean, you can find them in like any sci-fi movie. But then I have a bar going across the bottom just for extra lighting down the corridor. And I did like a quick um, time lapse of me working on this last night. So if you go to my Facebook or Instagram page, you can see just a quick minute and a half rundown of how I built this scene out. And basically it's really simple. I just have two cylinders and then everything else is built out with cloners. And the one important thing, if you're bringing stuff into Unreal, when you're using cloners, you want your instance mode to be on instance. You don't want to have render instance or multi instance. I did a little bit of testing with that last night and I found that it wouldn't import it. So you always want to use instance on there. So let me check with Unreal. Okay, yeah, so we have our scene built here. And there's a couple of things we could do to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to delete this floor plan that came with it. And then I'm going to, um, on your right hand side under world outliner, this is basically your hierarchy. So if you're used to working in cinema, it's basically the same thing, but I'm going to delete all this stuff that came in it. So I'm going to delete my light source. I'm going to delete my sky sphere, my skylight, and I'm going to leave my reflexive capture because I have a lot of reflections in here and I want to build off of that. And so what I'm going to do now is if I come up to build and you come under lighting quality, let me do high. And then you want to build your lighting. So I guess this is like, I'm still new to um, Unreal. So I guess this is kind of like rendering, but what this does is kind of assesses your scene, see how the lighting is going to be affecting your scene and reflecting off of everything. And then it builds it so that it bakes all your lighting and your shadows and everything into your scene. So that it's more efficient when you're running in real time. So let me exit this out. Let me click play. So this is what my scene looks like just with those emissive light materials in there. And so we want to add a couple of the um, Unreal lights so we get a little bit more moody cinematic look in here. So I came over to my left hand side under modes, clicked on lights. I'm just going to drag my point light in here. I'm going to drag this up to the top. And essentially moving in Unreal is the same as any 3D program. So it's pretty easy to learn your way around. So I'm going to click on my point light under intensity. Let's make this like two. So we just want enough light to make it kind of look moody in here. And I'm going to copy and paste that light. So I hit control C, control V. I paste in another light. And I'm going to bring this one into a different place in my corridor here. Oops. Like so. Okay, so I should be fine with those two lights in there. Now I'm gonna build my lights again. So I'm gonna go under build, go to building light only. Click on this. And we'll see how this changes our scene here. Down in the lower right hand corner, you'll see building light and it'll give you a percentage. It all depends on how fast your machine is and um, you know what your specs are in your machine and how heavy your scene is as well. So it looks like it's still going pretty fast here. Give us a second to kick in. There we go. Now let me click play again. Now we have a nice moody corridor. Now I'm using the keyboard and mouse, like I said, to move around in my scene. But the one thing is, it's like just a floating camera. Like, a, I don't know, like, I guess you call it like a Superman type flying through. So it's not exactly real. So. There's a way you can add like a first person camera as if you're playing like a video game and it's already set up automatically with Unreal. You don't have to do any coding or anything. And so what I'm going to do now is in my lower left hand corner, click on add new and then go to add feature and content pack. And remember those templates that we had saw before, we can actually bring those into our scene. So I'm going to bring the first person one in. It's the very first one here. Click add the project. And now if I go up to my settings and go to project settings, 
there should be something over here called modes and oh there we go maps and modes and what i want to do for my game default or my default game mode is click on the first person game mode so I click on that and the one thing that i did have trouble with is um a lot of my stuff that i brought in from cinema 4d i can't get colliders to work on it and so my workaround for now for that was just to put like a plane on the ground so if i go back to basics drag a plane into my scene then i'm just going to zero out my location and i'm just going to scale it to the size of my corridor pretty much like so and so now if i click on play now pull up my xbox controller there we go so now i'm actually walking around in my scene here so that's just a quick down dirty way of getting your stuff into unreal from cinema 4d yeah so hopefully that helped you guys out it's really fun working with cinema 4d and unreal kind of seeing how your stuff is playing out in real time i um i'm still learning this stuff as i go and so i know a couple of people asked me if this is a valid replacement for like redshift or the standard render my my hope is that i can start using unreal a lot more in my projects i do a lot of explainer videos and so you know if i could quickly run everything in real time and shoot it through and then bring it to after effects to do some like post um, compositing then that would be a dream come true no more rendering overnight or centering the render farms or anything like that but hopefully this is a good starting point for some of you guys spread this video around i know a lot of people are having trouble trying to import this stuff so hopefully this helps everybody out and until next time keep creating leave me a comment below subscribe and i'll see you next time